give any any other advice that's just kind of come up in your mind one one question that i probably have gotten a lot throughout the years of playing is how do i become a pro your goal should not become a pro to make money what motivation mm. should be the, the passion for the game and if you want to become a pro start with passion start with fun <laughs> My name is Ablox and I'm a professional Valorant coach. This series of podcasts is aimed at bringing knowledge to aspiring professional players in the Valorant scene and the wider esports scene. We talk to professional coaches, professional players, performance coaches, people that work in organisations to bring you the value that you need to become a professional player. Today we have an absolutely banger episode with two world champions. We have G2's IGL Mimi and her manager Tybalt. G2 Gozen are one of the most accomplished teams in the Game Changers scene, and of course, so much knowledge to back that up. Really, this episode, if you're a Game Changers player, really will change your game. Such a high value episode, really, really fantastically well-spoken individuals. I couldn't recommend this episode enough. Sit back, relax, and just take it all in. So. First of all, I just wanted to thank you guys for joining. I know that you're kind of like in the middle of your split, I guess, as it, as it were. So it's a busy time. Um, so I, I really appreciate you making the time just to sit down and have a chat with me. Um, of course. I, I, I've written down like a, quite a long list of the list of questions, but I guess it's first maybe useful for you guys to know kind of what my <laughs> what my objective is with doing this. And I guess... Um, you know, so I'm I'm a coach, and that's always kind of been been my thing is to to really try and bring impact to people and to try and help them achieve achieve their goals, and that's really been kind of my ambition with this podcast is to try and bring knowledge that people don't have access to typically. Right, I think it's very hard to get hold of. You know, if you're a spying pro player, you know, and you're kind of playing tier three, um, it's kind of hard to get that information that that really kind of takes you to that next level, and that's that's really what what I what I aim to do with this podcast. Um. Yeah. Okay. So, I guess I guess like the the, fir the first question that I I I'd kind of written it down was, if you kind of you th you think back to last last year and kind of the the end of your season, and like arguably you did pretty well, right? In the in the grand scheme of things, you did pretty well, but maybe you you didn't achieve the kind of the goals you would have liked. Like you would have obviously liked to win kind of game changes overall. Um. How did how did you kind of feel about that, and and what did you think was really missing in the team? I think one thing that's very obvious is that we were missing a lot of firepower. Um, when we lost Mary, retiring to her school, <laughs> um, yeah, we lost a lot of firepower, and and she actually brought a lot of things to the team um, that we really noticed after we lost her, and we kind of had to figure out someone who could try and and take her space. She she was filling very big shoes. And it was in the middle of the season and every everyone is basically signed. So you have to find someone out there who is not that can still bring a lot to the table. So Sarah was our only hope, but Sarah also never played on a team before, a full on ranked player. So there's a lot of things that we had to um, teach her. And I mean, in the short time that we also had her, I she grew a lot as a player as well and and um overall i think we were very happy with the third place at champions obviously at the beginning of the year we had completely different plans because we kind of thought out the team we already had um but i th i think the ending to the year was as good as it could be even better um I just wanted to not lose every <laughs> everything at Champions. <laughs> Honestly, I I we didn't really know what to expect, and what we were really winning on was our team play and our, how good our chemistry was outside of the game too, because we were all very good friends and we were mm. 
vibing really well together. And I think that really made us successful in the end also. Yeah, I, I guess this is kind of an observation from the outside, right? But I think that like as a team, like Gozen was really... You guys are like really strong kind of when, when Game Changers were kind of released and, and and throughout the kind of early early stages of Game Changers. And as things have kind of progressed, I think other teams have like really kind of brought their level up a lot. I think obviously like like the team, team Liquid in Brazil, I think we, we've been fortunate enough to play against them as well. And they were just like on an, another level, like when we when we practiced them. I think, uh, I guess kind of what are your, what are your kind of thoughts on that? I mean, do, do you agree? Do you disagree? It's... it's it's just a kind of an observation, right? It was like you were kind of so, it felt like you were so far ahead and then a lot of people have like done a lot to kind of catch up. Yeah, I think in 2022, mm. that's also how we felt, especially in Europe. It was basically us and Guild. The rest of the mm. teams were very far away. Yeah. But yeah, from the beginning of the season last year, even in EMEA, you know, we, we realized, okay, all the teams re really want it too, you know, like we're not the only ones. Uh, and I think BBL is a, is a great example. Like, mm most of their players were unknown before last year and and they all stepped up massively from one year to another um and yeah i think like last year we had a very strong pool of teams in the emea i think like the top four teams were, were very good uh was very close in the end to decide who was going to go to to the championship and yeah even in other regions i feel like in brazil uh with teams like liquid and loud we had very two very strong teams yeah uh maybe na is a bit different i, I feel like shopify is the only good team but also like there's not a lot of support when it comes to like organizations are not really supporting game changers in na outside of um of v1 previously and now shopify there's FlyQuest now but yeah that, that's pretty much it like they have two signed teams uh mm. which uh, yeah is a bit sad but yeah even in in asia like in 2023 we had it was the first time we had a very competitive APAC team, like with uh, SMG, and it, yeah, it's it's really nice to see that the top four teams are champions or like teams from every region, basically. So that's pretty cool. Mm. Do you, do you put a lot of uh, kind of change changes in uh, I guess the hi hierarchy of teams down to finding new players, kind of undiscovered talents that that, that we didn't, you know, that just we just, did, just weren't known before. What do you think the real the real change change has been? I think the scene is so young still, you know, that it's uh, at the beginning it was fine, you know, going with like the very experienced players because everybody was pretty much, you know, discovering the game. But now that, yeah, a lot of players have had time to, to put in the hours, especially the, the younger ones, we're seeing uh, we're seeing a lot of, yeah, up and coming talents. And <laughs> I think it, it's becoming really important to, to keep an eye on them and not only rely on the on the players that were strong maybe in previous years, you know, and, and always look for the, yeah. The up and coming players. Mm -hmm. So, when you're looking for up and coming players, what are the kind of things that that, that, that you're looking for? Um, I would say that first we want someone who can fit the team's vibe. Uh, that's I think something we've learned over the past years, and that is yeah probably the most important thing for us. We don't care if you're the best player if you're not if you're gonna basically make everybody everybody go mad in the team. Um, we had that in the past um mm -hmm. so yeah i would say that every time we start you know the the interview process with a new player it starts with an interview we don't even we barely talk about the game you know we just try to understand who they are where they come from how they they behave we also talk a lot with their previous teammates previous staffs to yeah try to get a, a better understanding of the person we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have in trials and yeah if they if they pass this test i would say uh we we, we see them in game and then, yeah, obviously, if you're if you're showing uh, that you're willing to learn, that you're willing to listen, that you're willing to work out, uh, and if you have the talent, I would say the raw talent, you you're, you're gonna have a spot. Yeah. Yeah, I think that I mean I'm so on board, right? Like, uh, I, I guess the, the the word that kind of people like to throw around nowadays is kind of culture, right? The team the team culture is yeah, is everything, exactly. and you you get the person wrong, regardless of them as a player, you get the person wrong, and it's just. Well, it's GGs, right? It's GGs before you've even started, so it's it's yeah. it's 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 a real killer. In terms of personality specifically, like what kind of things are you looking for? And I guess I guess interestingly, like what things are you not looking for? I mean, specifically things that you kind of like. <clears throat> oh, that's a that's a red flag to me. You know, like if I see a player like this, if they say this in an interview, you know, I I, I just don't think there's someone I want to work with. You can take this one. A lot of things. I mean. <laughs> 
toxicity is obviously one of the first ones. I think it is also really common. I think, hold up. It says a lot about a person, the way that you receive feedback. And if you take it with, in a negative way, it's already a red flag. Like you, you're going to have a really hard time working with this person who just don't agree with the kind of feedback you're giving them or just think that they're better than feedback. Um, I think at least as uh, someone who has to give a lot of feedback, it's very important that we can, first of all, have an open talk about it, but also them just realizing they did a mistake. Um, for personalities, I mean, we're, we're kind of, how can I say this? <laughs> um, very much ourselves in the team. It's not a red flag that you cannot be yourself, obviously. Like, it always, like, you need to condition yourself into a team, warm yourself up to to be able to give your give your full self. That was also one example for Sarah, for example. Like, in the beginning, she was super shy and, and didn't really jump along on the jokes and all these kind of things. But at the end, the champions, she was completely different, like, going on with the jokes as well. So... There's just this kind of, if you don't, if you're having a hard time getting along, getting along with the jokes, I think you're just going to have automatically a hard time mm. finding yourself on the team. Um, not, not that we wouldn't ever sign anyone that's shy. That is not what I'm saying. Um, but, it's, but it's always just really important to be able to to build that kind of team chemistry with every player and not just a few. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that like the trust goes so much deeper, right? I mean, I think this is mm. why you want to be on the on the, on the same level with someone. I mean, it's interesting, like because I've had this kind of discussion with a few different people, and it's it's really clear that obviously it like transcends the game, right? I think uh, you know if you said to your best friend, let's say you have a best friend that doesn't play games, right? Someone that you're really close with, you say, "Come play a game with me." You you know instinctively your, your your synergy will just be better right mm, yeah like just straight exactly. from the get-go Definitely. and you, you, they could have never played they could have never touched a mouse and keyboard for a, for, for the purpose of a, yeah. of a game and you would have so much more fun yeah and fun yeah. is is really so important in game like obviously it's a serious game it's competition but if you're not having fun with it it's gonna be the longest days of your life mm. and like right now it, it just feels like every day goes by so fast because mm we're just having a lot of fun and and everyone is really contributing to that fun so so we're just one group of funny people <laughs> <laughs> i i love that right but it's also you know it, it like it pushes people it, it pushes people maybe that's not the word people feel comfortable to kind of like you like you say bring their own ideas be creative and, and that's obviously yeah. when the team really builds its own identity <laughs> right and and you're kind of really able to play as you should play right uh, as yourself right f f yeah. just not not just not just technically correct as it, as it were i also i also haven't had the question so we talked a little bit about players about um about your coach tempfies how how did you end up end up like choosing him what, what was the kind of process process there um yeah i mean basically after after champions and, and two years with carcass our previous coach we decided to like explore other options. Uh, we didn't know if we wanted to, yeah, to continue with them. And I felt like it was the right timing since we were changing a lot of players to potentially find someone who could, yeah, fit better the group. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I just had a bunch of interviews with a lot of a lot of coaches. Um, mm -hmm. Pretty much the same process as with the players, you know, like trying to get a, a vibe check and also understand how 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 they like to work. Uh, some some coaches like to you know they have their own ways and they want the players to adapt to them others try to adapt to the group um and yeah it was just like we basically chose the coach after the players basically uh, i mean the roster wasn't locked but we we had a pretty good idea of where we wanted to go and yeah it, it was just about finding the the missing piece and i felt like victor was ticking a lot of boxes when it comes to yeah um uh, I would say interpersonal skills, you know, in the way he's behaving with the players, in the way he can help them improve in the game, obviously, as individuals, as a team, but also outside of the game. 
um, and yeah, bring some kind of uh, of, of support on, on that side. Uh, and yeah, overall, I think he's also like a, just a very smart guy, very hardworking. He puts in a lot of hours, and that's that's always something you you want, especially when you have like a I would say a smaller staff like we do. We only have a head coach and a, and a team manager, so he's the only one you know with Mimi in charge of uh, of the strats and game. So yeah, it was really important for me to have like a an overall profile that can that can pretty much do everything. Mm. Yeah, they were all like sending the small amount that Thibaut, um picked <coughs> out who were a potential of a coach, like sending videos of analyzing a game from one of a champion's games. And he was the one that also, uh, wait, what's the English word for this? But like, I saw the way that he see the game is very much how I see the game. So I yeah. know that we would not clash in that way. And there's also just some where I'm like, nah, <laughs> I already know by the first 20 minutes I watched of the yeah, video, this yeah. is not going to work out because the way I see the game is not the way he sees the game. And we were going to just basically argue all the time if that's the mm. case. Mm. And um, it, it was that video that really actually sold us because he was pointing out many good points. Um, and I already learned something just from a, a introduction video that we asked him to do. So, so I, I think that it was just meant to be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's I, I totally on board that you have to like be on, be on the same page. But you said something really interesting, Tibble, actually, that I wanted to like go deeper on very like slightly was you, you said some coaches kind of have their own way, and other coaches want to help the team. But if if you're a coach and you have your own way, isn't that just wrong? I mean, isn't it just straight up wrong? Your job is to support the team. Yeah, I think so. Because at the end of the day, you're not the one playing the game. So you need, like, the way I see it, you need the players to play the way they want to play, and you need to support them. Uh, but yeah, it also comes down to, as Mimi said, the, the vision of the game you have mm -hmm. and, and finding the right fit, especially between the IGL and the coach. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. So it, it was it, it was interesting. So I, I obviously I followed some of the stuff on, on Twitter, and you said our, our our final goal is to is to make it into the regional league, right? How easy or difficult do you think do you think that's going to be? I don't I don't think it's going to be easy for sure, um, but I think we can say that we have had some pretty good practice lately. Um, and we're just still in the in the beginning of the of the team and really just starting to dig into the surface. So I do truly think that it's possible. Um, maybe not necessarily next season, but it will happen the season after then. Like there's, it's gonna be a hard fight because the road is long. Um, mm -hmm. But we also have very high skilled individuals on our team and um, they can out aim people if if they're like feeding themselves you know that like they're really good yeah and and i just like we played yesterday and that was not even that was maybe 50 percent of the team you know and there's just so much firepower and just to be able to trust that n a, a round is never over just because we're 5v4 or 5v3 like everything is literally winnable and i i really believe that it it doesn't matter what team we're playing against <sighs> maybe not fnatic yet but you know <laughs> yeah yeah i've i i've, I've been impressed even if the like the top the, the top <laughs> teams in the regional leagues are having well you know obviously scrims are one thing and then obviously officials officials are another this is this is a topic that like to be honest i wanted to go kind of deeper on because again i said that like my goal is to is, is to really kind of level up the scene and it's a topic that i think people are maybe scared to talk about is this kind of perceived difference between where the top of game changes is and the kind of maybe the top of the regional leagues is and i think like it's a topic we have to talk about right because like I said, I want to support everyone's growth. I want us to be able to be on a competitive stage where anyone, no matter their background, no matter who they are, can come in and if they put their mind to it, can compete at the highest level that, you know, they're limited only by, by where they set their goals. Yeah. So 
what do you think needs to change? I mean, obviously, like you said, it's, it's a long process. What, what do you think are the things that like really need to change in <clears throat> maybe in the scene, but also in the way that in what people are doing? I think definitely the way people practice. Um, and obviously, I, th I think that when it comes to like the top of Game Changers, you also really need to be a strong individual team to be able to complete at a, at a challenges level. Um, that's just how it is because you might as well be really, really good as a team, but Don't you also back. have to win your fights. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's also one thing that makes Gosen so different this time because I truly believe that everyone, we have the best player in their role by far. Um, and it just has shown the last year how how good everyone is. But I truly believe that you need to practice in an efficient way, and that both goes that both goes for individual but also as a team. Um, I think that probably one of the the biggest things that game changers teams lack on. I think it's been a general thing for females female team in generals. I've been on many teams now, and and I know how the typical female team practice mm -hmm. and it's not a lot of uh, reviewing it's it's a lot of just practice and um the way you practice is also really important you need to understand that you're practicing to practice you're not really practicing to win the scrim that's not mm -hmm. the point you need to learn you need to understand um how to do your executes when it's the right time that's also one thing like igls of of any game to just like, in general teams like they need to understand when is the right thing uh when is the right time to call one thing and understand the deepness of a round mm. um and i think that is just a general thing that game changers teams lack on like you need to be able to understand how to watch a demo you're not just watching a game to see who's winning you're watching a game to understand oh why are they rotating why are they going for a b execute now why are they doing this why are they doing that like you need to constantly question everything and that goes for a team too you need to set so many question marks during your practice to be able to learn and not just play because we're having fun and we're getting paid and you know it's life but if you want to take it to the next level you need to be super strict with yourself and your team to 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 go above game changers and it's th not an easy road no, and i think i think what you've said applies to any team you know i've been playing on plenty yeah. of kind of tier three tier three teams and you know uh and <laughs> it's the same right you go in and you watch a, a team that like hasn't really taken the time just to think just to just to pause for a moment and say <clears throat> is our practice the best practice we can make it yeah. I mean, most of these things are pretty logical, right? It, it doesn't take it doesn't take a huge amount of thought to think maybe we should watch our games back and like see what we're doing wrong, or maybe yeah. we should watch a tier one team and try and understand their decision making process. You know, it doesn't yeah. take a genius to to figure those things out. But I think, how much do you think of that is? It's just like people maybe don't actually want it that bad. I think. I mean, obviously, I don't know because. For Valorant, I have only been in Gozen and yeah. um, before me IGLing, it was Petra, but me and Petra were very aligned on the game and how how to approach it. And before that, it was Juliana who was the IGL and I have mm. been under her, uh, her being my IGL for many years, like six years or something. So I have not actually been on many different like under many different ideals yeah um so i truly cannot say how other game changers teams practice but what it seems like for example um like tempest coming in as a coach before us rebels i think tempest has a lot of good points like he's very good in in some ways where it's like dude i actually never thought about that um, but mainly because it's Valorant and 
sometimes I since I come from CS, there's a, there's some things that I'm still learning. I I'm not perfect at all. And the, there are still things that we did last year with Carcass that we're slowly trying to figure out how we can do it together. Because it seems like that is nothing that he has done before in the mm -hmm. way that he has been coaching. And I think maybe that's just a general thing for game changers teams that it's never fun to look at your own mistakes, but it's very necessary. I mean, you can keep on praising yourself of this was a really good round and this was a really good move, but what what do you learn from that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah maybe. exactly. You're not going to make any progress if, if yeah, that's something you, you can do. try and replicate it as many rounds as possible, but that that's not really that efficient, in my opinion. So, and also when it comes to like practice hours, one thing that we strongly go by is uh, quality over quantity like you can yeah you can sit there and practice for eight hours but if you just play seven games and have one hour break then I, I don't think it was a good quality practice you could have probably reduced that by half and have way more efficiency out of the out of the games um mm. i personally asked um a few top teams how they are practicing and how they're schedule looked like because i was very curious to see how it is compared to our practice schedule and we um took a lot from um some of the teams we kind of like figured out like the key points of every team and uh, made it into a schedule that fits us but that also makes a lot of sense for how the professional teams are actually practicing mm -hmm. and one of those things that really were in in every schedule was reviewing and it was more than twice a day like mm, it's super mm. important and that's also just what top teams prioritize you don't go into practice and just pa practice five games a day and then you then you call it a quit <laughs> you, you don't do that um but it just seems like that is not the norm for every team i guess people aren't really aware right especially people that are that are part-time you know they come home from from school or they come home from work and then then they're, then they're going to practice i think people don't realize that if you've got four four hours a day you're probably better off every single day doing a vod before those two scrims and a vod after those two scrims Absolutely. that would probably be more efficient than just doing four scrims because yeah. it's all about improvement right it's all about having clear goals and going in and playing your games with intention going in and saying i want to improve on this thing i'm going to consciously focus on this specific goal that i want to improve on and every single day you make yourself 1% better and by the end of the, the year you're a you're a different team right agreed so i Hopefully. think i think something that you you mentioned as well as about is about firepower and i think like this obviously this comes up a lot right a, a, especially like people talking about the game changers scene you know and i it's not very constructive constructive conversation i think a lot of the time what do you think needs to change to kind of bring the, bring the kind of average firepower up? You, you know, do you think people need to start aim training? Do you think that people need to start like taking it seriously that, that, by the way, guys, like the most important thing is actually to be able to shoot people. And we all love strategy. Like, I think, I think, you know, especially if like you're in a team, you're really in into that kind of thing. Right. But if you can't like achieve the top ranks on the rank ladder and to kind of be competitive with the, the players that are, that are in the challenges league, for example, if that's your goal, then you know they're just gonna they're just gonna shoot better. They're gonna they're gonna make dumb plays and they're gonna shoot better, and it's and it's gonna be a problem. How how much thought do you think like really needs to go into that, and what 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 do you think maybe needs to change? Um, I think for like aim training, obviously I I do think that it's very important that you take that individual time for yourself. That is not a part of your practice time, um, but it's a very individual thing. And it also depends on how you learn the best. Like for example, for me, uh, I have both tried um, like doing 30 to one hour of um, aim laps or Kovacs. And because it is shooting balls or shooting objects, I don't find the connection with Valorant. Mm. So for me personally, I like DMing, but focusing on that can be um, okay, I'm going to focus on one tapping. I'm going to focus on um, positioning myself in a proper way that will 
be in my favor or mm -hmm. for example i never dm with music on because it distracts me a lot and i want to be able to make it as real as possible and playing with sound is just such an important thing of the game and i i do that like i i need to be able to hear so i can figure out what battle i need to take next and then there's people who play the range but just stick into something consistent where you can some kind of seeing a progress i guess seeing a progress aim labs or Kovacs is just the best way to go because you have uh, scores on how good you're doing mm. um but like let's say for example vanya um our controller she's probably playing two to three hours dms a day and that's just that's a lot. how she gets super good and consistent and mm. It sucks. Like, let's be honest. No one enjoys to play at least just one hour of DM. That's really boring. I think but, she does. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, maybe she's just yeah, a sadist. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you just have to bite into sour apple and go for it. Like, if you want to become better, you you need to do the things that no one else wants to yeah, do. Yeah, hundred percent. I I I'm I'm. I'm so I listen a lot to like DDK's podcast. I don't know if, you, if you've mm -hmm. listened to it, but like it's 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 really interesting. And the, and like a topic that's like been coming up a lot recently is about like aim coaches. Is it something that you've mm. ever ever thought about? You know, I, I think it's a really interesting discussion, and I think you know it could it's something I think that could really le level the the playing field, right? Because of course, like like we've kind of said, like on average, I think the firepower is a big difference maker. I think between game changers and kind of challengers. It's funny you mention it because uh, last year, um, Glance, our main controller last year, um, she started working with an aim coach and um, she believed that it helped her. And I think, again, because she did it with Kovacs, mm. I, think I, I think that would be like some of the usual programs that an aim coach will be uh, providing you. I expect um, so. Yeah. But I uh, I tried her routine, and um, we tried to implement it on the team as a, like we need to get this done because like this will help us. But again, for me, I, I don't know. But when I go into Kovacs, it just doesn't help. I just start whipping more in game. So maybe maybe it's a mental thing. Yeah, that's also something I believe. Like aiming is. <laughs> maybe 90% confidence <laughs> and uh, you know if you have confidence you aim better and and if you believe that something is not working it will not work because you believe that but if mm. you believe that it's working you will go in with a different mindset and different confidence um personally i have no idea if it actually can help you i i guess there's some science behind some things Definitely, um yeah. but I, I don't have much experience with one. I don't know I mean, if Ben's ever at, told you, Thibaut. You look at kind no, of conventional no sports. <laughs> In yeah. conventional sports, right, you think probably the majority of the practice is actually drills, right? Mm -hmm. It's not nothing to do with playing the game. They practice the mechanics of it because the mechanics of it are, you they have to be perfect, right? Yeah. In conventional sports, even more so, I think. Like, actually, the kind of, I, I think even the mechanical level that we're at now, at the highest level, the, the best players in the world, the gap is still massive. Like the best player in the world is a long way. The individual variance is very, very large at the top is, is what I mean. Like the, the best player compared to kind of the average player in VCT is probably mechanically like, they, you know, they put them in a one-on-one, -on -one, one of the players would win nine times out of 10 because the difference is, is that large. And I think uh, it's, it's become clearer and clearer to me actually that it's still, it's a deficit everywhere, right? It's not just, game, it's not limited to game changes. It's even yeah. at the highest level in, 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 in VCT. I wanted to go deeper on another point you mentioned as well. And this is, this is again, kind of a, like an observation from like when we've, when we've practiced game changes teams as well, specifically is you say about confidence and it, it often feels, it feels like you're playing against a team that isn't very confident. Mm. And, and, and it's not like, you know, it's not like we haven't played a lot of game changes teams. Like I've played a lot and it seems to be like a real sticking point for many of them is that like, there's this hesitation and you're like, you you know, I mean, even watching his observer, you're like that person should have killed, like that that person on the enemy team should have punished my player, 
they 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 should have punished that. You know, if they just peaked together, they they would have won that fight. But he got away with stupid play because they didn't believe in themselves and didn't make the play that that they probably know was right in in you know in hindsight. Do you, do you kind of feel the feel the same yeah, way? About yeah, that? yeah, yeah. I mean, I I think those kind of things could come down to a lack of proper practice Mm, because if you would review the game you would see uh well probably we should have at this time because of this information we already had do this and if you're not doing that you will not learn to do so um Mm, it mm. there's some things that are very obvious after games but if you don't discuss them properly but mainly review them, like actually see what's going on so you can then put it into practice. Um, it's just, you will never learn. For example, mm-hmm. um, yesterday in our game, uh, a, few, um, a few weeks ago, we, we practiced Icebox, right? And we came in a situation, it was like a 5v2 or 5v3 in a pistol round, and um, they planted a spike for CT. Or for, for snowman right and we then started to retake through snowman because that's where they were we got completely demolished and we just lost around it's the same thing then we discussed it after like we should probably not retake where we know they are already stacking up having yeah, strong, very good crossfires yeah exactly we get into the very same scenario yesterday completely the same and because we practiced that very thing and we talked about it, we discussed it, we knew, okay, the right thing is not to start retaking through where they are setting up, having crossfires. We learned around super easy. It's mm. just small things like that. When you practice it, learn from it, and then take it into the, the, when it's important, mm. <laughs> you learn from it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't do the thing that you didn't practice well then that's when you become better. Mm. And I feel like I I cannot know for sure if that's the case, but I just believe that that's the case many times. Teams just not understanding how to Mm. Mm. practice. Yeah, and I think, like you say, it's like you make the mistake because you don't know what to do and then you're not reviewing it so you you never know what to do and then you're still in this in this space where like you you you're not confident because you don't actually believe you know what the correct the correct the correct play is right confidence is just yeah. a is just a manifestation of like how well prepared you are for it and how many times you've practiced it previously like it's a, it's a it's a it's a combination of kind of practice or preparation and and experience right it's yeah it really is actually comes down to those things in my mind. So it's interest, interesting that you say that, that it's that that lack of conf, that apparent lack of confidence is probably a lot still to do with the way that people are preparing and, and practicing for for their games. Yeah. I mean, we're also, especially on lurkers or people that's playing alone, letting them limit us a lot in, mm. in practice so they can make all the mistakes to an extent okay in practice um so they can grow the confidence knowing when to do the the, like when to do the lurk or when to take the fight or when to leave the site all these kind of things knowing the right timings for themselves without without me having to say all this small things constantly because if you if you don't get to do these things in practice then you will never know in an official game. Should I push now? Should I wait? Should I <laughs> constantly? Should I? Should I? Should I? And mm-hmm. you don't want to have these should I's in a official game. You want to know, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. okay, now, now I do it. I know this is the right timing. Mm. I think that's great advice. So, I, one of one of my favorite questions to like I'll, I'll ask guests here is kind of what's the what's the biggest challenge that you've had to overcome right what was it and and how did you overcome it because i think you know we can learn so much from from our, our kind of experiences right and this goes to both of you it's that same as, as a staff member right like i've done a lot of interviews with, with coaches as well um like to both of you i guess what's what's the biggest challenge that you've had to overcome and, and how did you overcome it 
probably have the same one in mind. Um, <laughs> and I, I feel like that's what has um, slowed us down the most in our like it's been a bit more than two years that we're working together with Mimi in Gozen and yeah every time the the thing that blocks us the most is like interpersonal uh, relationships uh, between people you know not not uh, agreeing and not being willing to work together and I feel like it comes down it, a lot of it comes down to making the right choice you know when you bring new people in into yeah. a team uh, and that's why we're taking so much time to do it and that's why we're in our process, always, you know, making sure that the person is going to fit the group, you know, uh, before even considering, okay, is this player a good player uh, in the game or not? Um, so, yeah, for me, that's, I mean, it's basically the same thing as, you know, in, in every team sport or a, a, any team, you know, like if you want to be efficient, if you want to be the best, you need to have people who can trust each other. It's, it's not only in the game, it's also outside of the game. And for that, you need people that, yeah, are going to be, Maybe they have some, you know, maybe they, they, they see things the same way, but they also need to be willing, you know, to uh, adapt to the rest of the group because in a team, yeah, you you always have to adapt to a certain extent to, to the others to make it work. Um, so, yeah. Nice. Do you have anything to add to me? Any thoughts um, for yourself? I mean, I, I just think as a player, um, one of the things that you constantly deal with would be confidence. And and that can come down to like just having um, like start the day off bad or you know you you just can't feel you don't feel that crispness in your aim in a DM session or something and um, battling with your own mind can be probably one of the biggest struggles big biggles <laughs> biggest struggles <laughs> as a player and. Having a having a strong mind is just super important if you want to go into matches or just any any it can be a practice match or official match is probably the most important. But of course, you you need confidence, um, especially also as an IGL, like you you need to be confident in what you're calling. You you and if you're calling something and well, they just have a hard counter to it, and then you're calling something else, and again, they're hard countering you. You you need to be able to have a strong mental to understand, mm -hmm. like, you know, it's just, maybe it's, it's just a bad game or something, and and not talk yourself down, because that is probably something that I've been very good at, and I'm, uh. and I, that's something I don't want to do, because um, I, I know that eventually, you will start believing your own words, even though you don't really mean it. Like if you're saying, oh my God, I'm so bad. And you keep on saying that every day, every time you lose a gunfight, eventually you will believe it. And instead, you can just encourage yourself a little bit. And say, ah, next time I got it. Oh, oopsie. Or, you know, something that's taken with, with some fun or some confidence. Because... I, I truly believe that confidence is key to success in, in any kind of area of life, really. I, as, a, as a performance coach, you've touched on an issue that's very, very close to, to my heart. And I think something that we, that we talk about all the time, right? Because like you say, confidence is critical, critical to success. And I think, um, I guess I, I want one piece of advice that I would give to people that are, that are struggling with that generally, I think is just attention is everything right if your focus is not on doing your job and it's on thoughts going on in your head you're not just battling your opponent you're battling yourself and it's really about taking the time before the game to realize the things that are going on in your mind the things that are one of the things that are your job right about the game about your calling about your preparation about your bloody hell you're shooting in the game right those are the things that are your job when you go into a game. The things that are not your job, worrying about people what are gonna people are gonna say on social media, maybe people are gonna judge you, right? That it's not your job to worry about them in the game and 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 and, and taking the moment, even even for some people, I think it could be beneficial just to write those things down and say, These are the things that I need to focus on, these are the things I need to not focus on, and, and allowing yourself the opportunity to not think about them, right? And consciously focusing your effort on the things that you need to focus on in the moment, right? For that game because attention is everything right that's because that's 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 really what is limiting your performance is that you're using half your brain power to worry about something else 
when what yeah. you need is all of your attention on the game and ultimately just doing the things that you do every day, doing the things you do in, in, in every single scrum. And I think, like you say, it's important because we all, every single person suffers with self-doubt, right? All of us, no, no matter who you are, no matter your background, at some point you suffer with self-doubt because it's just human. Yeah. So I, I also wanted to um, to ask, I guess, about your kind of thoughts for, for, for this year, right? It's kind of coming into like the last the last 10 minutes, you know, what do you want to do differently this year? You know, like what was the, the thing as a team? You're like, we've got to change, you know, we've changed the players. How are we going to change what we do to make us better this year? Um, I, well, now that this is the first year of me being the IGL, like we started last year with Petra being the IGL. So this is the first year where I start being the IGL and I just really want to, well, first of all, I'm going to make sure that I watch all the games that I possibly can. Um, and I just really want to make sure that we learn as a team and we grow as a team and we can all be on the same page. And there's no one who is afraid to say their opinion. No one is afraid to disagree or all these small things that can just hinder growth and i think growth is everything in a team it doesn't matter if you're if you're the best team you can still grow it it it's just how it is and you can always become better and well nine out of ten times someone is always better than you <laughs> and and you just i just yeah like i i just think growth is my overall mm -hmm. um title of of this year mm. and i know it's very possible because we have so much passion in the team and there's well as i mentioned a lot of firepower and they're they're super hungry all of them like mm. they have never experienced winning you know and there is nothing more like um there's nothing greater to strive for, right? That feeling yeah, exactly. of lifting that trophy at the end of the day. Because I don't think, like you say, people don't know what it's like. I think you, yeah. you know what this, like, like, what this is like better than most people to stand on a stage and lift a trophy. And Yeah, and, and it's just, I know that they will do everything to that. And, and they're really great listeners on top of it. And it just makes my job so much easier. And I can keep on working really closely with Tempest and we can create something that's hopefully unique and make our team stand out. And we just want to be more than a female team. We want to be mm -hmm. someone that's feared because we're, we're a good team. And that's something that we're going to work really hard on achieving because we also know that it's not going to be easy. And there's going to be very hard days and there's gonna be very good days and we're gonna need to learn from all of them the good ones and the bad ones yeah i also feel like it comes down to the environment we create in in the team uh, mimi has been mentioning feedback a lot i think it's yeah really important to be obviously able to take the feedback but also to give it like that, that mm -hmm. i think that's what one thing that makes mimi a really great player is that if if she sees something that she's doing wrong or, or she or she has a question um about how she's playing or about how her teammates are playing she's going to mention it you know in reviews and it's going to create the conversation and that's how yeah it's, that's by having those conversations that you you're going to improve and that's something we're really trying to push especially the new players you know in, in the team to yeah not be afraid to ask questions to just yeah you use all we we need to use all the brains to question what we're doing and make sure that's the right thing to do and and yeah make sure there's nothing better we could you know we could be doing um and yeah i think it comes down to well yeah making sure the environment is um allows everybody to do so and it comes down to yeah making sure everybody feels comfortable everybody feels happy to come to practice in the morning uh and yeah happy to be around the same people for <laughs> many hours every day for a very long period of time because that's also yeah something that maybe most people don't know we we spend i don't know 
seven to 10 hours a day on Discord talking to each other. And yeah. when we're not talking to each other on Discord, we're on WhatsApp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> talking about the game or, or anything and watching pro games and sharing clips of like yesterday, well, VCT just started. Yeah. After we had our official, after our official, two of our players went in ranked because they were like, okay, let's keep grinding. They went in ranked and they were streaming too. And then after that, everybody was watching the VCT games. Mm. Taking, making clips, posting them on Discord. Oh, this smoke is nice. Oh, we should do that. Oh, this retake was good. We should write this. And yeah, I feel like it's all about you know the environment and 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 making sure the people are they just yeah making sure the people want to get better. You know, mm. keeping mm. the this mo this motivation up uh, over time. I think. I, I love it. I mean, it sounds like you've got a really great atmosphere there, right? And I, I guess uh, I, I also wanted to like, echo, echo a point that you've made about um, feedback. I think, uh, again, like the problem most people have is that they're really avoidant of conflict, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're scared to say, I'm, I'm sorry, like Mimi, that call you made was, it, was, it wasn't right in this round, right? Like I had this information and we shouldn't have done that, for example. And I think, you know, and that can go for any any single decision in the game. You shouldn't have peaked, you shouldn't have smoked this, your flash was late, whatever, right? People are so scared to to do that. But it's the friction that makes us great, right? It's the it's it, it's every single little piece of feedback. And your coach cannot, it's impossible. You, you know, unless you've got ten coaches watching the game, it's impossible to catch every single tiny little mistake, right? And yeah. and ultimately like a goal is to win championships, right? And and you want to get all of those those mistakes out. So I think like just to like echo the advice you, 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 you've kind of given and like say it specifically to people that are listening is you have to be able to call your teammates out for mistakes. And that, that that's both in the, you need to not be afraid to say that. And like, you're worried that there's going to be some kind of explosion and the whole team's going to fall apart, right? Like that's just bad team culture, right? If that's something you're yeah, worried yeah. about, that's all of the things you guys are talking about already, right? Is this like the, the culture then, the culture sucks. <laughs> Um, yeah. all, all the people, all the people suck, right? One or the other, those things. So there's always got to be some friction, right? There's always got to be some level of, of abrasiveness that just, that's what keeps you moving, right? That's what, that's what keeps you always making those little steps to, to get, to get better. So we've got, we've got five minutes left. I guess I just want to give you guys the opportunity to, give any any other advice that's just kind of come up in your mind even if it's unrelated to kind of topics that we've discussed um and of course if there's anyone you want to on, want to shout out as well i want to the, the stage is yours i want to shout out all my teammates you guys are amazing petra amy vanya rescue tempest <laughs> you guys are amazing we love you <laughs> i mean i think one one question that i probably have gotten a lot throughout the years of playing is how do I become a pro and I, the first thing that always comes to my mind is that's like your goal should not become a pro to make money mm. if if that's what you want <laughs> especially in this world <laughs> yeah but <laughs> The, the passion is just not right. Like you're already going, I mean, let's be honest. Many people think that, okay, you're a professional player. You make him bang, man. You can, you're falling, <laughs> but, but that should, that should never be what motivates you. What motivates mm. you should be the, the passion for the game. And when you love what you do and you're having a lot of fun with it, with the teammates that you have, it will literally come to you eventually because yeah. you will improve you'll get better you will start winning and when you start winning then what then orc see you they will notice you it, it will go that way so if 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 you want to become a pro start with passion start with fun because then then it's gonna come to you eventually mm. Yeah, I feel like that's probably the, the the best advice and the main main thing to focus on finding what you like to do on a daily basis because yeah, it, it's a very like you're gonna need a lot of of practice to to make it. So if you don't enjoy it every day, it's gonna be it's gonna be really hard. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, I would also say that focusing on yourself and trying to you know 
not uh, care too much about other people's opinion is uh, is something you should try to do because mm -hmm. when when you're gonna be yeah, playing official, there's always gonna be people you know in Twitch chat on on VLR commenting what you're doing. There there's a reason why they're commenting and not playing. It's because they wish they were in your in your spot, you know. So I would say just try to focus on yourself, make yourself better every day, and yeah. Don't don't listen too much to what others are, are doing and and yeah, just keep grinding. Yeah, mm. and take care of yourself. Exercise, mm. hydrate, be mindful with yourself. It's so important. Like these these things will help you become a better player as well. It it just it's just how it is. So you need to take care of yourself. Don't just stay inside and grind for twenty hours. You're you're gonna go crazy and not in a good way. <laughs> Yeah. A lot of people still think that being a pro player is just playing the game. Uh, yeah. It's not. It's being able to play the game consistently for a long period of time. And if you're not, you know, as Mimi said, <laughs> going out of your room, if you're not exercising, if you're not having a good sleep schedule, if you're not eating properly, you're not going to feel good playing the game every day, sitting on your chair. So, yeah, it's, there's a lot of other aspects that that we could touch on and that are outside of the game that you need to work on to be in the best conditions to perform in the game and yeah mm. it's in general yeah i think it's it's, it's it's advices you could give to anyone not not even only in esports you know like just take care of yourself and yeah try to feel good in your in your head in your body and it will make the rest uh so much easier yeah i, th I think um excellence is a mindset right I mean, you look at people, I mean, you can take basically any sports person. Uh, and I mean, there are so many sports people that are excellent at more than one sport, right? And you're like, well, those, they, do, those, do those skills really correlate, you know? Um, if you go out and you meet brilliant people, you'll find that they're brilliant in almost everything they do, including their, their sleep, how they look after each other, because it, it, it's all connected, right? Everything is connected because it's all about how you frame it in your mind what you do, how you live your life. Um, I think it comes back to passion, right? But doing it with everything, all of yourself. And like you said, yeah. the success will come. If you, if, you are, if you are doing everything that you believe a pro does, if you think this is what a pro does, this is how they live their life, you start doing that, the success will follow. Yeah. And don't get complacent after mm. small mm. victories too. Uh, like a lot of players when they're when they get signed to the team they they wanted to join or when they win they start winning a bit they think they know everything and they stop you know looking for okay how can i improve this how can i improve that and yeah just always keep in mind that there's always people you can learn from even if they have less experience they have a different experience so that, that's something to learn from them uh so yeah just Staying a, a student, I would say, in general. Mm. Mm. Chronic learner. That's that's a word that yeah. I, I recently used to describe myself, and I think that's a yeah. I think I think that's a great way to think about it. So yeah, I again thank you guys so much for your time, and uh, thank you. Yeah, I hope I can invite you guys on again. Again, you know, later this year when <laughs> when you've had all your success, and and we can we can talk about you know what it really took to to kind of make that make that happen. Yeah, Mimi said that it might not be this year, but it will. <laughs> hey, I'm just, I'm just trying to stay humble here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Thank you.